Right then, there's going to be some massive changes at Manchester United in the coming weeks and months as Sir Jim Radcliffe starts to implement his new football front office. And a big name that could be involved in that and is rumoured to be involved in that is Sir Dave Brailsford, someone who is very famous for the phrase marginal gains, something that he's implemented in cycling. But who is he and what might he bring to Manchester United? Well, I'm hoping to answer those questions right here in this video. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, hit like, hit subscribe, and let's get into it. Fancy some free beers at this holiday season? There is no better way to enjoy the football over this festive period than with some free beers from our friends at Beer52. Simply go to www.beer52.com forward slash house, and that's H-O-W-S-O-N, pay the 5 95 postage and get your exclusive case of eight free beers. I'm a big fan of Beer52, and as you can imagine, recently being Oktoberfest, they have decided to launch an exclusive Oktoberfest case where they've selected beer from across Germany that you can't get anywhere else. They are new, they're exclusive, and they are absolutely tasty. This is Wiper and True, and this is from a Bavarian master brewer. It's a tall boy, it's an Oktoberfest beer, and it's a smooth sipping, easy drinking, beautiful beer. You can choose between a light case or a mixed case if you are a fan of dark beers. And don't forget, you get a couple of tasty snacks in there as well. And as always, you can learn about all the different breweries, all the different beers in the Ferment Magazine, which is in every single box. And even when you get in all of that, if you're still unsatisfied with these exclusive beers from around the world, then you can pause or cancel at any time. So that's beer52.com forward slash Hausen. That's beer52.com forward slash Hausen, H-O-W-S-O-N, to go and get your free case of beer. So Sir Dave Brailsford has been touted as one of the masterminds behind the very, very successful uh, British cycling, Team Sky and Ineos cycling success over the last uh, 15 or so years. And if the talk is to be believed, it looks like he could be calling Old Trafford his next home. Reports from the, the footballing world are suggesting that Jim Radcliffe wants to bring on Sir Dave Brailsford as part of a three-person football committee that will work with him to be able to steer Manchester United into a more successful uh, sort of operation. Brailsford is a man renowned for the emphasis on finding marginal gains wherever they can be found. Uh, that phrase is going to come up time and time again uh, when it comes to Sir Dave Brailsford. What it means is just making the smallest of improvements wherever they can be found. And it's a good attitude to have, really. Like, you know, if you can find a benefit in diet, in sleep, in the way the team travels to the games, in the fabric used in the training kit, in the, the paint in the home dressing room, all of these things can start to add up. Um, and that's the sort of things, the philosophy that this guy um is about and it's obviously probably more noticeable when it comes to things like cycling where aerodynamics can put in a massive uh, effect uh, but under his leadership british cycling absolutely excelled at the olympics uh, and in professional cyc cycling most notably with team sky uh, and later latterly team ineos brailsford uh, has been a big big figure and his career began with uh, British Cycling and he rose to become the performance director contributing to Team GB success all the way back at the 2004 Athens Olympics and his approach seems to involve um, improving everything that can be improved by 1% leading to significant overall enhancements team gb absolutely dominated the cycling medal table from 2008 2012 uh, and brailsford also has managed team sky which has won multiple tour de france from uh, 2012 through to 2018 and this marginal gains philosophy that he's got um was one which propelled british cycling to this unprecedented success it could hold untapped potential in the realms of football. <clears throat> uh, and here's why. So one, it's a culture of continual improvement. And I think Manchester United, this current iteration of Manchester United could be, could be guilty of resting on our laurels, looking for Hail Mary transfers rather than seeking continuous, uh, you know, gradient 
uh, improvements in all areas. Brailsford approach is one of a mindset of perpetual growth. And in football, that means refinement of skills, uh, development and evolution of tactics, of teamwork, of mentality, of inching closer towards excellence. Uh, and a psychological side of it is, is actually huge in, in that as well. Number two, it's attention to detail. And I think this is something that United really have, have let the ball drop on in a big way. Scrutinize every single aspect from nutrition to recovery to how you travel to the pillows used by the players. Um, everything in football that could translate to op optimizing training routines, whether it's the times that training is conducted. Um, as an example, I know UFC fighters have got quite a few friends who are high level MMA fighters and fought in the UFC. One of the things that they do is they taper their training times to the time that they're going to be fighting, especially when they move um, the last couple of weeks of their camp to say Las Vegas, where they're about to be fighting, they will start their training for the day at that time of night. So they, they're not going to um, get up at 9 a.m., 10 a.m. and train if they're fighting at 10 p.m. of a night. They want their systems and their body and their natural sort of circadian rhythm to be in sync with when they're expected to perform. Now you, put that up against say Manchester United we train at 9 30 10 a.m so why are we training at 9 30 10 a.m every day why is that the hardest part of Manchester United training when matches are 12 30 at the earliest and eight o'clock at the latest why do we not maybe train in the afternoons would that not be a better utilization of our time it's possible right three Data-driven decisions. Um, obviously, data has become a lot more important in football. Brailsford has leveraged data to make informed choices. And football, with all of the rich analytics that exist within it, offers an absolute treasure trove of in insights that could enhance what we do, from scouting to uh, talent to anything from strategic planning and that sort of stuff. Number four. Creating competitive edge. By focusing on small cumulative improvements, teams can gain an edge over rivals. We've seen recent improvements in Liverpool hiring a set-piece coach or a throwing coach. We've seen what happened at Midland and Brentford. There are loads of ways that you can improve the smallest little things in football, and it's always a, you know, it's a constantly changing algorithm. So there's always the scope to do this and sometimes these fine margins can mean the difference between victory and defeat because the the margin of error in football one of the reasons it is the most watched game on earth is because games are so low scoring you know there's so few opportunities for goals in football that's why they're so important because one goal literally could win a game you know you see basketball and, and some other sports where there's score after score after score after score well there's lots of scoring opportunities that one goal becomes less important how many champions league finals do you see that are one nil two one it's absolutely loads of them Number five, and this ties in with everything else really, but it's enhancing player welfare. Marginal gains uh, prioritizes holistic well-being. In football, that translates to injury prevention, that translates to mental health support, and that means that players are operating at peak condition without off-the-pitch worries going on. And when we see what's happened at Manchester United recently with all of the off-the-field bullshit that we're dealing with, no one can look at that and go, well, I'm sure that's really helping everything go in the right direction at training, can they? So making sure everyone's focused, got everything that they need dealt with and not worrying about any of the off-field shit would be a massive boost for United at the present time. Six, improve cohesive team dynamics. So Brailsford emphasised teamwork. He was a massive fan of just constantly emphasizing and praising how teamwork um, is understood and how it's implemented into everything. And football, more than a lot of things, really, really depends on teamwork. Marginal gains foster better understandings. It can make patterns of play on the pitch appear telepathic. It's not, it's just worked. It's just everybody understanding what the team needs to do and their role within it can have a massive, massive impact. You know, you always, one of the best, biggest compliments that a manager can ever be paid is that their team looks well drilled. Well, that requires teamwork to do that. Number seven, adaptability and innovation. Um, 
Football, I think, is so far behind. When you th see things like the UFC Performance Institute, the Australian Institute of Sport, and some of the things that are being done in labs, even in like NCAA college football uh, in America, the Premier League, for all its wealth, is absolutely lagging behind in performance. And marginal gains requires a willingness to experiment and to adapt. And in football, that could mean trying new formations it might mean new tactics it might mean new emerging technology it might mean a new way that you emphasize certain things how you know you you see goal kicks has evolved over the last four or five years they, they it could be anything you know it just requires someone with a bit of a forward thinking uh, and the balls to experiment and you could find something new number eight sustainable success now this one for me perhaps the biggest one um by avoiding drastic lurches, big money signings, unsustainable changes, Brailsford's approach does favour long-term excellence, sustainable, organic, things that can be repeatable rather than like we went bananas on, on buying a load of players this year and then I don't know what the fuck we're going to do next year. In football, that translates to consistent qualification, top-tier performance and knowing what you're going to get from one week to the next. And I think that if you looked at United right now, that's the issue. You don't know what performance you're getting out of United because there's no consistency to anything that we're doing. Now, it's not about controversy. Towards the end of Team Sky's dominance, uh, there was a lot of controversy that did involve Sir Dave Brailsford. He left British Cycling in 2014 um, and there was a, a mysterious package sent from British Cycling to Team Sky back in 2011 leading to doping allegations. After five years of speculation, Brailsford claimed the package contained decongestant called, I'm going to fuck this up, Flumacil, but there was no proof. A UK anti-doping investigation in 2017 did find no doping charges against Team Sky or British Cycling, but a committee report stated that Team Sky had crossed an ethical line. In 2021, British Cycling doctor Richard Freeman was found guilty of ordering testosterone to enhance performance, and the report criticised poor record keeping and poor medicine policies in British Cycling and Team Sky. It also alleged the use of, again, I'm going to fuck this up, triamiclone uh, to enhance performances in the 2012 Tour de France. Despite concerns, um, Brailsford did continue success with Ineos uh, Grenadiers, overseeing various sports teams and managing the football team at Nice. And despite initial challenges, the team have improved. Um, if Brailsford's focus is able to switch to Old Trafford, I think he could become part of a very interesting team, especially if it does involve the likes of Paul Mitchell coming involved in doing the transfer negotiation. One thing I'll say on the on the the doping side of things is cycling is an inherently dirty sport. Um, so there's no shock that there's a cycling team, certainly a successful cycling team, involved in allegations and suspicion of doping. I think the entire sport is dirty. Um, I don't know what to think about that, in all honesty. I don't know if you could find a, a clean team out there. Um, does that ultimately fall upon the director yeah, it probably does ultimately i guess um would it have happened anyway without him it might have done uh jury's out on that as far as i'm concerned he has been found innocent of any wrongdoing um apart from maybe like your record keeping's been a bit shit which isn't illegal is it um but it'd be interesting to see what impact this has on united and that's not me saying that i think united might start doping um <laughs> at all uh but it'd be interesting to see what impact these marginal gains have, because I do think that there's a lot of reluctance to get involved into the intellectual side of, of performance enhancement for whatever reason. I don't know if it's uh, the working class nature of football where it just doesn't sort of sit with that. People, you know, love the, the phrase of the eye test, but I think there's a lot in sports, particularly when the sport is getting quicker um, and they're covering more distance and the players are bigger and more powerful. I think there's a lot of things to be gained in terms of um, legally enhancing performances. So it will be interesting to see where these marginal gains occur and what sort of impact they have at Manchester United. But let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. Laters.
Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.